from the MDR Studios in Davenport, Iowa, Quad Cities. You're listening to Minor Disturbance Radio. About all things that rock. And some that suck. This is Minor Disturbance Radio on 97X. Welcome to the show. Travis is here. Yo. We have a special guest in the studio with us tonight. A we legend. Have, yes, a legend. <laughs> Please. A virtuoso. The one and only Mr. Tony Vogel is in the house tonight. Yo. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me, man. Well, Tony, you, you have been around for a long, long time. And I remember just coming into the scene, uh, you were one of the... I don't know if I want to say forefathers, but you were definitely somebody that had already made a name in the guitar, okay. you know, arena around here. As far as when you heard names of guys, of, you know, that were already making a name for themselves, Tony Vogel always came up. Yeah, wow. And uh, you know, you remember I was like I do. sixteen. But you know? I mean, I, th- <laughs> was th- I already forty five? <laughs> uh, no, uh, we were still listening to forty fives. <laughs> That's true. Mm. Um, no, what? Uh, no, the the legend and lore surrounding uh, Tony Vogel for me was uh, that you had won the guitar contest, and uh, and for winning it, they gave you a guitar that you thought was a piece of shit, and uh, so you immediately sold it at McKay's. Wait, 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 wait! Is it the yeah. one with the fly on the it? The fly, yeah, that uh, that yeah. Kramer guitar that had the, the fly. Cra- yeah, the yeah. first one with the fly. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, it was a Kramer. Or was it a Hamer? It was a Kramer. It was a Kramer. And I traded it in for a Hamer. Oh, ah, that yeah. was it. So, yeah. okay, because I knew something like that happened. Yeah. Yeah. So you got this ugly guitar with a fly on it. Yeah. <laughs> it had one pickup on it. I don't even think it had a real floating uh, Floyd on it. It was. Yeah, it like, might have had a Floyd. I can't remember. I, I See, I think it did, but what I remember it? I, it I picked it up. It might Maybe it was like the Schaller version or something, but I remember picking that guitar up, and I was like, yeah. This is a piece of shit. <laughs> like the action was super high on it, and like it hadn't been set up, and um, the uh, the mount for the bar was totally loose, mm-hmm. so it was just flopping around in there. So you couldn't, you know, couldn't really operate the whammy bar on the thing. And I just put it back and thought, you know, oh. what a piece of junk. That was the first guitar contest, and uh, they wanted me to play a little bit on it right after I won the, the, that contest, and it was just like. Why I can't? <laughs> well, why would but I they? Did. Yeah, I don't know because it, it, the was finale it? needs right. to be bigger. Right. I think it was there be- is the winner playing the winning guitar because who, that who donated a- the guitar? Griggs. Music. Music. Okay, yeah. so that's was, why because right. yeah. it, it was Griggs Music and ninety seven X that right. put on yeah. the guitar contest, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't enter it until ninety one. I think possibly I'm not yeah. sure. I can't remember. But uh, you were already you already had one. So what year was it that? Uh, it was eighty nine, I believe. It was. I think that was the first one. And then Wade Torres got the trophy the next year. I Am I correct? So. Yeah. I think that, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I judged the next year. All right. And then I took a break. And I think it was it was ninety two when I won it again. Oh, that was the second one, and then the, there was one more. But I mean, that's I mean, that's to me, that's how I came to yeah. know of you. Oh, you that's know? weird. So, because yeah. well, I didn't play in many bands, I played in Avatar, and I just kind of that was it yeah, right. for a long time. So that was your band back then, was Avatar, right? Was it an original band? That was an original band. Uh, we recorded an album called Run in the Red Light. way too hard you know what happens when you try way too hard mm-hmm. it's not good was yeah. it really progressive <laughs> it was it was pop progressive so it was a combination of van halen rush and me just basically coming right out of git and playing way too much ah G- git guitars yeah. yeah. guitarist institute of technology that's that is right. correct that's yeah right. Which I don't know what the technology has to do with it because all it did was build shredders <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know but no uh my my experience with you, Tony, was very uh, limited back right. then. You know, because here I am, this kind of like skinny kid with the torn up jeans, trying to be some rock guard. You know, trying to grow my hair past my shoulders, trying to think I'm something special. One pickup Charvel up there, <laughs> tapping arpeggios, speed picking. 
that's what I was into back then. Right. And I, I, if I remember right, the, the the year that I played in the contest with you, um, yes. I forget the yes, host, Brian. whoever it was. I can't remember who hosted it. Who was the guy that talked in between? That was... It wasn't Ian Case, was it? I do not remember that. It was a guy from Griggs. I thought it was a oh, dude from... Steve it was Judge? Steve Judge, wasn't Steve it? Judge, El, El, El Judge Ador. I think it was him because he said, Brian Minor, hard and fast. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I always thought that was cool. I was yeah. like, hell yeah. Basically, he was saying you came way too quickly. <laughs> oh, I just came out. Your I partner out was coming. left unsatisfied. I came out coming. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I oh, came gosh. for a minute. And, what was it? Four minutes we had to play? <laughs> I jizzed the whole time. You know what I mean? <laughs> there was no foreplay. No. It was like no. Brian Minor. Yeah, yeah. Give then, the girl a kiss, boy. <laughs> no, I didn't even. No, I didn't even look her in the eye. You know what I mean? I just right, said, exactly. I grabbed her, bent her over, grabbed yeah. her hair, and ah. got, got it done. It was a fucking but, quest for fire. <laughs> see, none of that makes a radio show. No, no yeah. that's <laughs> pure. Po- it. That's pure <laughs> podcast land right there. But um, no, my experience with you was uh, it w- really wasn't a good one. No, it wasn't. I and apologize. No, no, no. You don't have to apologize yet. Let me tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> but I must because. Yeah. because the older I got, I realized why you did that. Oh, I kind of because I turned I into the was... same guy. Oh, um, but <laughs> no, I want we tied. You and I tied for third place one year. I thought it was second runner up. Whatever, whatever you want to call third it. Third place. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, Tony. <laughs> I came in second place. No, second. you came in second runner-up. That's third place. Yeah, because there'd be first place, first runner-up, and then second runner-up would yeah, be right. third place. Third place, wow. yeah. Yeah. So he's here he is telling everybody I got second that year. <laughs> See, it says second, and you just put yeah. tape over runner-up part. Yeah, mm, there it is. I got second. <laughs> anyway, we tied, and the prize was uh, a sure wireless um, system, a, d- a single diversity, though, one oh, antenna. It yeah. was just the one oh, antenna yeah. one. Yeah. And, uh, it's going to make I'm, mush I'm like, of your tone. You know, I was bummed I didn't win, too, you know? Right. And they're like, we got to tie Tony Vogel and Brian Minor. And I was like, well, I tied with Tony Vogel, man. <laughs> yes, he's going to be so, he's going to, I'm going to come up there and he's going to be like, all right, grasshopper, you have passed <laughs> yep, the exactly. test. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I come up there and he looks at me and goes, you can keep the wireless kid. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> That's amazing. And I was like, "All right, man." But I mean, but you didn't. <laughs> oh, but no. you didn't realize that basically, if you've seen the movie The Jerk, uh, there's a moment where Steve Martin's character Navin Johnson finds that he's in the phone book. And he believes that he's finally made it. And that's basically <laughs> what? what happened to Brian. Yeah. And well, uh, part of me was like, wow, man, that guy is, you know, that's odd. I didn't recognize it then for. I don't know. Maybe you were mad at who took second, or you were mad at who took first, or you're mad at how you played that night, or whatever it was. Or I took it as you were mad that you tied with this punk kid. Not at all. That did yeah. nothing but arpeggios and kneel down on his knees and act like, uh, <laughs> you know, he's no. an Iron Maiden or whatever. It's because all of us are so self absorbed that we can't recognize how self absorbed everyone else is at the same time. I mean, sure. that's really me, what well, it yeah, especially to, yeah. at that time. It was we're still trying to get out of the '80s, and we were all still competing. Yeah, and they were still trying to keep. <clears throat> push competition yeah, that's a thing and then what know? we needed was what we have now right which is a, a family of musicians in the quad cities that yeah. all help each other yeah. out now. well yeah. i always thought that, that you were Thank you, Thank you were an that. amazing yeah. sorry i'm sorry yeah. to talk over that Go say ahead, that again man. say that no, again. I, I was gonna say thank you for that because yeah. you know <clears throat> one of the things that really kind of was soul crushing to me at the time was I had an experience in the guitar contest where I got up and I choked, you know, like my hand stopped working. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I really felt bad and I really felt embarrassed. And then as time went on and I really started thinking about what the situation was, I realized that it was a fundamentally toxic situation from the oh, get go. Yeah. That the whole idea, the whole notion of trying to come up with these like, quantities to describe something that is so abstract and then to try to have us perform in a way that's meant to be a bigger quantity or be a greater thing or whatever it just it's out of a you know it's sort of out of accord with what reality, place did you, you come know? in um i think i came in i came in like way last Okay, well, that if you'd have came in year. second runner-up, you wouldn't be talking like that right now. Well, you'd be yeah. saying, it's totally legit, right. yeah. and like, they yeah. really know how to vet out the shitty guitar right. players. Right, <laughs> <clears throat> No, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that had I done better, uh, I would have eventually realized how dissatisfied I was with the whole process. I agree with you, Travis, yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm making light of it. Yeah. Um, I, my whole experience with the guitar contest, now, you got to remember, 89, 90, 91, guitar, player, guitar players were 
like heroes to people. You know, right. it was all about guitar players. Yeah, whether it was because of Eddie Van Halen and all the 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 guitar. Every band back then had to have a virtuoso guitar player. That's right. right. And you remember you'd be, you'd hear the band, you hear the singer, you're like, "This is cool," but I'm waiting for that solo. Right. Right to determine whether I like the band or not. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. And then so that's how I was anyway. Yeah, I, mean, I totally for was a long way. time. So we were heroes in a way. You know, we were definitely the hot thing. Right. And uh, or we wanted to be. <laughs> well, right. and here I am, 18, walking into the call ballroom with my Charvel in its case, you know, and I put on my cool pants, the coolest pants I could find, you know. Right. I'm like, okay, what's going to happen? I have no idea. I've never really been out of my bedroom before and wow. saw the pool of guitar players that exist. Yeah. I did the under 21 part, but that was under 21, and there was a big gap. There wasn't very many players under 21 at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were all older. Yeah. So once you got to the over 21, the finals at the call ballroom uh and you walk in there and there's literally tables are full of people yeah. i mean that room's full full yeah i remember yeah. that you do one now there'll be 25 people there yeah and it'll be all guitar players competing <laughs> yeah, right. you know what exactly. i mean right. so <clears throat> and i was just that like freaked oh. me out yeah that was yeah. the 90 i think in 92 it's just like oh my gosh this is like a, an audience of a concert yeah. yeah, that many people yeah. sitting around and going, "What is going on here?" It's yeah. just a bunch of guitar players <laughs> uh -huh. showing off. Yeah. Four minutes playing yeah. through the worst PV half stack that oh, Greg's yeah. had. Oh, yeah, the Lord. PV VTM one twenty. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. Oh, how I hate thee. Let me count the ways. Oh man, that's the one that has the little tiny micro dip switch on in the, on the front of it oh. where it's got the, the the eight little tweaks that you can do gain one gain two it's kind of like base the one base two yeah into the, it's yeah. the it's the same physical component that's oh, in a sand it really? yeah it's the same physical but it i mean obviously it accesses different features okay nobody but, no. nobody gives yeah. a shit let me tell me <laughs> let me tell the story about my guitar All right. contest guitar story. contest do it do it god Damn, it's minor disturbance radio. <laughs> I should call it and I am, disturbance. No, and I am disturbing you. That's <laughs> how I do. No. Um, so, okay, you go into this. I go into this room, and I remember I find my little corner. I'm I'm amazed at how many people are there, and I'm and I'm really thinking to myself, I'm really gonna go up there on that lit up stage. They're gonna say my name, and I'm gonna stand there by myself and play electric guitar for a packed call ballroom by myself mouth dry the whole time you know scared out of my mind but still trying to act like to say no shit i do this all the time you know like you know i'm comfortable here inside i'm scared oh yeah oh. and i remember getting my Everybody guitar out does. and you know i'm yeah. wiping down my strings i'm looking around and i'm kind of warming up and i'm watching other people warm up and that's where you find yep. out you find out the people on deck that are ready to go up what they're doing yep and some of them man i was like oh no yeah it looks like they're just <laughs> tearing it up but you can't hear anything because yeah, right. it's an electric guitar that's not plugged in right. it looks yeah. like you know they're playing upside down and stuff and <laughs> playing with their tongue yeah you know and i'm like oh i'm i've had it and then they get on stage and it's like Clunk, 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 bing, bong. I'm like, yes. You know, I'm hoping for the worst. I want, I want all their strings to break. Fail. You know what I mean? I want the, the chord to come yeah. out, which happened to a couple dudes. Like, yeah. da -da -da -da, bong. The chord's laying yeah, on the stage. Right. They bent over to pick it up. And of course, <laughs> they didn't put it back through the strap, so they stepped on it again. And it came out again, yeah. which that happened All the things were happening. And, you know, you get the you get some guys that come out there, they got their long hair, you know what I mean, and their cool pants, and then they got, like, glasses on. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Anyway, so... <laughs> You know, you watch people warm up, and you see them go, and you kind of place yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, and there would be guys like you that would get up and do your two hand technique because you're playing with everything. You know, and I'm like, what? Well, haven't figured that one out yet, right? You know, and I don't know how much that weighs with the judges, but it looks pretty cool. Mm. He's using all of his fingers, couple toes, yeah. Like his, <laughs> you know, whatever. And I'm like, wow, that's that's. I'm probably not going to win. It was very cool to see. It was, but th them days, you know, if if I could buy a ticket anywhere. I would love to buy a ticket back to that era where you could walk into Griggs Music yeah. and you're immediately peeling your ears to hear who's in the guitar room. <laughs> and if you hear something back there like, you know, that sounds good, like, you're like, oh, shit. Who's I got to go back there and see who that is. Oh, who's, it's Tony Vogel. Who's at, the, I mean? who's at that big boss pedal board yeah. display they had and has the digital metalizer turned on. <laughs> and then there'd be these kids and there were just all the pedals on at the yeah, same time. Right, right, and right. it's just like... <laughs> Trying to do smoke on the water or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like, dude, yeah. don't use a speaker cable as your main instrument cable. The days of, of Chris Noth 
at, yeah. at Greg's. You could walk in, and Chris would have a running list of like all the the top dogs, right? Uh-huh. And well, he, it seemed to me he would always be like, "Hey, have you seen this guy? Have you oh, seen he this guy?" He always people against each other, though. He would down talk the other dudes to you, and yeah. down talk you to the. But other But you know dudes. what would make you better than him is if you bought this strat. That's right. And this <laughs> shitty PV strat. Actually, if you bought a Sansamp, <laughs> it's if you bought a Sansamp, man. That guy was like the Sansamp and Roland GR1 dealer of oh all time. So, he sold more of those. Yeah. The cool thing about you probably bought both of them. I have, absolutely, I have less money now than I did then, yeah. and I didn't buy anything. Yeah, didn't buy I just won shit. stuff and traded it at yeah. other stores. <laughs> I remember the first guitar that I bought. Do you remember the first guitar that you actually went out and bought with your own money? Um, he's, he's like, well, that's like 85 years ago. I don't, I don't. <laughs> How old are you, yeah, Tony? I am 54. Really? This, this, this month. Okay. Yeah. I'm not that much younger oh, than yeah? you. Oh, yeah? I just had a birthday myself. Uh, really? What What day? Uh, 28th this year. Oh, right. well, it's always the same day. Right, right. It's this year, yeah, right. It's oh, I this go, month I, is what I meant to say. So, yeah. I, well, I remember the first guitar I bought, and talking about Griggs, yeah. um, one year I won a Hartfield guitar at the guitar contest. Uh, it was like a real low model one, mm-hmm. and that's when in the 90s when the Hartfields were new and popular, Vinnie Moore was using them, okay. and I won one of them, and I just loved it because it was an Ibanez, basically, but yeah. it said Fender. Right on it. So oh, I wow. felt I felt like real cultured because it's a Fender, but I'm a shredder and right. it's an Ibanez. Right. And uh, that white guitar, um, the one in the middle with the Redskin logo on it, mm-hmm. that white uh, Hartfield there. That's a that's a Talon Five. That's the highest model that they make. And right about ninety five, that whole shredder guitar thing flagged. I'm sure you yeah. remember, mm-hmm. like oh, all God, the yeah. the bright pink Ibanezes mm-hmm. were gone, and you couldn't even get. They're all ugly, like uh, Nirvana guitars that look, right. you know, Mustangs right. and all these things. Mm-hmm. And that guitar was sitting on the used wall at Griggs, and that was a twelve hundred dollar guitar, new. Right. And they had it on the wall with a case for two fifty. Jeez. With a hard with a hard shell, and I picked it up. I said, "I'll take this." Yeah. Wow. And uh, bought that for two fifty. And nowadays, you can't even get them for any less than like six hundred bucks because yeah. they're. It was such uh-huh. a s- small run of them, right? Yeah. That people are seeking them out. Yeah. Plus, I I think uh, during that time, the Japanese manufacturing, uh, particularly their uh, their methods for curing the wood and mm-hmm. doing fretwork, was superior right. superior to what was going on in the United States for sure. Oh, I yeah. mean, those those guitars. Uh, the relationship that that factory had with Fender was to make all of the Japanese made Fender guitars. Right. Uh, the company was Hoshino mm-hmm. uh, that makes uh, the Ibanez brand and uh, those strats that they put out those Japanese strats from the early well, and mid 90s. Well, the Squires are good. Uh, well, yeah. They started out as Squires. Right. And, I have well, an that's 80, who, I have an 82 Squires yeah. strat right. from Japan. And but that's who, that's that's who yeah. made them hard oh, okay. right? Yeah. 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 Same factory? Same factory. Except they built it to like a more of an Ibanez uh, spec with the wider necks, right. kind of like the yeah. gym. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, It was. I mean, they were already in, because I mean, Ibanez, in that sense, Ibanez isn't actually like a real guitar company. They are a brand mm-hmm. of guitars that are sold by this particular concern called Hoshino. This, this thing is beat up because I, it was with me through the all the you know all of yeah. Drop Hammer. Yeah, wow. it, you know I used it to record both the records and uh, played with it on stage all the time. I mean I wore the shit out of this thing. Yeah. But look at what we have here. I've replaced the the Dimarzio Super Distortions with Seymour <laughs> right. Duncan's right. because it went. What is that polyphonic? Oh, when it goes microphonic. Microphonic. Yeah. Yeah. This one went really? microphonic. Yeah. But there were Super Distortion, Super Distortion, Dimarzio Middle. Um, I of course replaced all the stupid saucer. You know the flying saucer. Oh knobs yeah, had, yeah. And put on these these nice steel steel ones here but i mean just look how nice i mean this, yeah this thing is built it is like a dude. Tank. they're built uh uh floyd rose uh floyd rose pro hmm. st- standard which uh, uh those use the machine screws for the fulcrums as opposed to the wood screws which i don't know there are people that kind of go back and forth on those um no. can i, I love can, is that the insert yeah the actual insert. inserts right yeah i think so i think it looks like the ones that are machine screws oh, i can't see See, mm-hmm. and I got the patented bread ties that I put through the spring yeah, right. so you don't get any spring ring. Which, by the way, I stole that idea from you. That is a Did terrific really? idea. Yeah, absolutely. The I mean, 24 fret version of this with the reverse headstock yeah. mm-hmm. and the super distortions, this is the, yeah. the five right That's, here, and I yeah. have four of them, Ooh. and they're very hard to find. You can't get them, huh? You can't find them anywhere, yeah. and if you do, I'll buy it. Plus, okay. they've got the giant Charvel-type frets on them. Are they stainless steel? I do 
don't think they are. No, that's beat how, up, man. I mean, how many that, times that thing has been sitting? Oh, oh shit! Yeah, he puts it through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to sign that ding you just put yeah. in my banner too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't, <laughs> I'll put a sticker over it. That's it's all good. No, I'll just, you know, every show I'll just come here. You can keep the wireless, Brian. Uh, yeah. And look, yeah. look here again. And then he comes here and pokes a hole in my wall. Sure. But of course, it's not going to play that well right now. It's probably not all wow, set up. That but neck is fast. It's yeah, fat. It's fast, yeah. I mean, that is for playing arpeggios. Yeah, it is. Yep. What are those? Yeah, I, I'm angry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You're angry. Yeah, we now. needed to get to that too. But yeah, anyway, we'll that, that's something more of your house. That's, that's something I'll totally uh, I also wanted to look at how straight the grain was on the back of the, yeah. the neck there. Holy yeah, lord! Yeah, which you can see that. Um, I mean, it's not a perfect quarter saw, yeah. but I mean, you can see right there, you've got decent amounts of perfectly straight grain with yeah. the neck. I mean, and you, you barely see that in any guitar. Yeah. And the faces of guitars, the book matches on them are just so lame. Yeah, but your fingers. I must have ate some garlic chips. <laughs> yeah, right. And then played on that thing. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> there. Yeah. Did you smell? Yeah. No, but, I'm just going to get a yeah. nice smell going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I can live with the rest sorry, of the Sorry, I'm embarrassed. I'm oh, embarrassed. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's no, that guitar has been sitting since the last time I played it in Drop yeah. Hammer. Yeah, really? Yeah, I haven't wow. changed the strings on it. Oh, jeez. Right. I probably yeah. should. But but, you, but you, here's what you'll do. You'll go out, you'll get new strings, you'll restring mm -hmm. all your guitars, and then they'll sit there. <laughs> and then those strings will go back. Well, I'll play that one at the jam, I'm sure. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, but, when it comes uh, time, man, let's get her back going. Yeah. Um, what always happened to me whenever I change freshly changed strings on my guitars is I start to panic in my head. I feel like, did I tighten down the... Oh thing right did i seat the string in there correctly uh, is it gonna mm -hmm. pop i'm afraid to bend them yep. the first couple yep. gigs i'm right. afraid to really get a bend on it because yeah. i'm waiting for the pink you know yeah. it's like dang it it's yeah. gone and you know and then finally you like get confident with it you're like oh yeah now i can really grip on that thing yeah. it usually takes about two gigs for me to get confident <laughs> you know a nice dive you're waiting you're hoping oh, you don't hear a tink 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 Tink, you know, tink, tink, or tink, you tink, pull up tink, on it, it's like, ah! pow, and one pops out. It's like, dang it. It always made me nervous, you know? Yeah. So I stopped doing my own guitars. I, I would remember take, that. You started yeah, bringing them I would to take me. them that. to wherever I could so that I could, that peace of mind was there that they right. did all the testing and the, right. all right. the stuff before I hit the stage right. with mm -hmm. it. And, and then if it pops, I could be like, Dravy, man. What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> what didn't you do? <laughs> <laughs> so you 100% guarantee the yeah. B string ain't going to pop out, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I actually, I, I've got some questions for you too. Um, you know, you talked about what was the first guitar you bought. Um, how did you start playing guitar? What what got you into well going? Uh, my dad had a baritone ukulele that just sat around all the time, and uh, uh, they strung it for, at, for the first four strings of the guitar. And I just sat around and played little d g and c chords cool until it drove him up the fucking wall <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said to my mom pat if you don't get tony some guitar lessons i'm gonna go insane because yeah. i cannot listen to him play those three <laughs> simple chords anymore and so mom went out we got a got a checkmate guitar at some pawn shop Sweet. down here in davenport action was like that yeah, high off of it man. which is actually a bad thing sure i, I got a lot of strength from it for a little kid yeah but it also that was my training of this is how hard it yeah my right. muscle memory is still this when i play right mm -hmm. although you know we all have nice guitars and yeah. they're not hard to play anymore yeah. but <laughs> when i'm i'm up when i'm up on stage i'm reverting back to you're grabbing childhood memories oh, like yeah. this is how hard it you got to grip a guitar to play. I think Clamp. that most kids go through that, except for the spoiled little rich brats that get right. like a, <laughs> a, a Les Paul. SP yeah, Deluxe. yeah. Right. <laughs> they get them for Christmas for the first guitar, and then it sits in their corner and gets yeah. dusty. You said something <laughs> interesting during what? that description of when you first started playing guitar. You said that you were running around playing D, C, and G chords, right? And your mom got tired of all these. My dad did. Your dad got tired yeah. of all these Didn't simple chords you. that you were playing, yeah. and then fifty-five years later, you end up in an ACDC AC tribute band playing them same, same chords. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> oh, the irony! Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Which see, the thing was, is that I was already. I grew up in seventies rock and roll uh, and stuff like that, and I was just going. I was looking at all these pentatonic licks, and it's like you know. Plus, I was also listening to. The Dixie Dregs and stuff like that. And I said, those are the types of chops I want. Yeah. I can't find anybody around here that's going to be teaching me that. So I go to school for a year and try to get the chops. Try, you know. And then I, you know, I come back and it's just like, okay. 
you know, you, when it, when do you get to use them? I got to use them for maybe a por- part of a decade. Yeah. And then yeah. it's just like gone. Well, gone. see, you were yeah. a little more on top of the game than I because I 1996, I was still trying to shred. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't care. I was like, yeah. nope, nope, it ain't going away. <laughs> yep. It ain't going away. <laughs> you can't take it from me. Taking it back. <laughs> Bring it back. Because I'm, I'm thinking in my head, like, I, I, I completely relearn how to play the guitar now. Or, yeah. I, you know, there was, there was times, Tony, where right. I was trying to, I wanted to be in a band and I would tell, they're like, I'm looking for this band's looking for a guitar player, and I'm like, well, tell them that Brian Minor wants to come try out. You know? <laughs> and they're like, they don't want you. <laughs> oh. And, and I'm like, what? what? And they're like, uh, they don't want a shredder. And I remember that being yeah. like a bad tag. Right. You know, yeah. being told that, no, they, that. Do, they don't want somebody like you. They want somebody that won't even play solos. They just want somebody that can write songs. And I'm like, I can write songs. <laughs> Like I was willing to lay down. I won't ever shred. I promise. You know. Yeah. What I'm saying? And, then, <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then I found out that that's impossible for me because right, yeah. I don't care what song we're yeah. playing. I remember we used to play Green Day covers back right. when I was playing in a band with Ted Renner and all these guys, and I could not help it. I'd be like, "When I come down, you know what I mean? I was like. I'm like, eat me. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you don't yeah. like it, eat me. I don't remember the solo ending. Yeah, but some Bush that. song or yeah. something, and I'm totally shredding. Yeah. Yeah. Strobe lights going off, smoke machine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Kiss my ass. I'm shredding. That's what I do. That's bad, though. Uh, but I mean, no, there was actually bands that would not let me right. be in a band because I played too, to me, I thought it was too good, but to them, it was like, no, no, we don't no. need that. that no. mm-mm, that's over. That's the mm-hmm. thing is that we we thought it was like, and I think we would have approached it as such because we had to develop certain physical abilities in order exactly. to be able to do it on the instrument. Mm-hmm. So to us, it was like this, you know, passing this threshold of technical excellence or physical excellence on the instrument. But really, what we couldn't see because of the quest right. to get there was that it was just purely a stylistic. It was just the deployment of an abstract value. It wasn't like it was better or worse. It just was the thing that we thought was good. Do you understand you know? what he's saying? Uh, no, I, gotta, I don't yeah. either, man. See, <laughs> I got go uh, to I gotta uh, go back to college right I'm now. I'm glad, because I, I know you're a smart dude. And uh, I'm like, man, am I really dumb? I'm over here like... I think I'm just gonna go smoke pot with yeah. all the losers, you know. Yo. I don't want to be smart. All right, all right. I'll say it. Yes. I'll say it simply. Uh, <laughs> no, don't. No, don't. We, don't need to. we wanted something we thought was good, but it turns out it, it wasn't was bad, dude. You gotta say dude after. Dude, <laughs> I gotta get some coffee. I gotta dumb you down, Travis. That's my job. I'm gonna make you a dumber person by the time you are done with this radio show. That sounds like a great fucking plan. <laughs> Tony, you are the lead guitar player in Rolling Thunder, which, yeah, your part is Angus. I am Angus. And for some reason, I gotta gotta be 100% honest with you. Sure. When Mark DeKalb approached me about putting, you you know, putting this new ACDC tribute band together, and and I was like, well, who are you gonna get to play Angus? And he said, Tony Vogel. I was immediately like, nope. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) He's not gonna do it. First of all, he's gonna laugh at you. He's not gonna wear the silly little outfit. You know, all this stuff that, you know, I was thinking, nope, ain't going to happen. No way. that. And then who's going to play bass? Jerry Smith. I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> no. Nope. You got two of the baddest players. You know, you got Tony Vogel, who's right. Tony Vogel. And you got Jerry Smith, who's, you know, used most of the frets on his bass before. He knows <laughs> right, what they're all right, for. Right. And uh, he might even play two doom, notes at doom, once doom, one time. Doom. You know, and so yeah. everything's completely stripped down and kind of, I'm like, man, there's so much just talent in that band. Dude. But. What does that feel like to play them songs all the time? Okay, it's one thing to be in a cover band and play like three of them, mm-hmm. but it's another thing to know 60 of them. Mm. And it's not easy. No, it's, it's not. It's not easy to know 60 ACDC songs. They're not necessarily that much different from each other, but right. they're different enough that if you say, if I say, hey, you know, how does this one start? And you go, it's like well if they all start that way <laughs> yeah, right. or it's an a mm-hmm. lord yeah lord right. save me yeah right okay i cannot remember how this song begins all right well this is interesting because were you an acdc fan prior to joining I, I i never owned any of their records but i always enjoyed angus's guitar solos even if they were sloppy he's just he is going for it even if he's not going to hit the right notes but yeah 
from a shredder's point of view. Right, that's where... And so the good thing for me is that this is backing me down into a simpler form of music, which is not necessarily simple. It's just different, and it's not as technically hard. But my body has to be an athlete for two hours. That's so another that's thing. Hard. That's yeah, hard to that's do the moves thing. and actually play the music at the same that's time. That's what I was going to ask and you. Sometimes I don't move, and then Mark throws a stick at me. Yeah, and I start <laughs> the, moving again. Yeah, the most difficult <laughs> part I would think would be learning the chore- choreography because I did a video for Rolling Thunder right. uh, when you guys were first forming, right. and you wanted to put a promo video together, exactly. and I was there to witness where you were on that aspect of things. Right. And I, I remember thinking in my head, I'm like, oh, man, because it's tough. It, think about it. You yeah. grab a guitar. Yep. Because I, I went home after that, and I was like, nah, I could do that. And I'm going to yeah. show them how to do this. And I'm, I'm making a fool of myself in the basement, yeah. falling all over myself, too. And I'm like, that's tough, man. Yeah. 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 It's tough to, 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 to get the double step on yeah. each leg. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. He's doing that constantly. And then the hop thing. Right. And you're still playing licks that aren't doing what your legs are doing. Right. No, it's And the crazy. double, the head bang, the way he does that whole yep. thing. The, right. And I, I remember at that shoot, we were trying to... We had to do that a few times, and, right. and you were kind of new at it. A very new. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I had a temperature for 103. Yeah. Oh! That <laughs> was very sick. Yeah. But it's it doesn't help in the situation whatsoever. But it, you did get it down, though. Yeah. And, and I'm glad to see that, because you, you yeah. kick ass at it now. Well, I mean, I, I when you walked in tonight, I was like, it looks like Angus Young. Yeah. <laughs> you mean, yeah. you start to turn into him. I don't yeah. know. It was weird. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, here's what I want you to do. I want you to play this very thematic solo that uh, is all in E minor pentatonic. And has about three different movements and jazzercise while you do it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I just wonder what Mark was thinking. Did he just yeah. kind of scroll through Facebook to find the first person that kind of resembled him? I don't know. And then like, hey, dude, you want to be in my ACDC tribute band? And then, because I, I just want, I want to hear the phone call of Mark calling or messaging, whatever it was. Right. Hey, Tony. Uh, and I can't do a Mark DeKalb. No. It, it, it don't matter. Tony, do you want to be in this band? <laughs> you want to play ACDC? And, and I would imagine Tony would be like, you can keep the wireless, kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, that's what I, it's, it's back to the see how it, full no, circle. I, I'm just saying I didn't think that th- – I thought that that was a little lowbrow for you, maybe from for Tony Vogel. Well, and then I was thinking, like, when you did it, I was thinking, go get it, Tony, because right. it's going to – I don't. I've never seen you in, the, like, a, a that type of an – uh, band or outfit, so I was excited to see you get mm-hmm. to play in front of big crowds. It's weird, yeah, because I haven't. I mean, this is the most popular band I've ever been into. In. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, I there's what there's actually people out there <laughs> and they're dancing. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's pretty exciting for me, you know, right? Because it's never happened before. That's it's cool. Like, you should see my tryout tape for Rolling Thunder. <laughs> It wasn't very good. Six foot three man, and uh, I wore the wrong short. I wore leader hosen instead. <laughs> I, was, I didn't make Should've it. Should have wore no. a kilt. <laughs> no, you could have done Angus, but you would have just had to have like a really big SG made for you, so it just looked <laughs> giant on you. Like, what's this big guy with that toy guitar? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I yeah. would have never pulled it off, and it has to be kind of a smaller dude, yeah. right? The, the the guitar looks like a big appliance yep. that he's got, and yep. it's a prop more than the guy. You know, I would look mm-hmm. like a gorilla playing. Yeah. Right. Anyway, oh, you I'm, just, I'm just playing around with that. I never tried out for that band. Um, <laughs> I was never asked. Although I'd have been, I'd have been a great bass player in that band. Yeah, you probably been pretty cool. I yeah. could have been the rhythm guitar player, the one that stands back by the amp, and doesn't yep, ever and come just out. Just has hair Malcolm. in his face, yeah. Malcolm Malcolm. Young. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, that'd yeah. been cool. Um, <laughs> Although, uh, you know, kind of on the subject of backing yourself down into uh, simpler forms of music, um, I- I've always sort of had the notion that uh, the simpler the music that you have to play, the more naked it is and the mm-hmm. more into the nuances of it you have to get. And you find that it's yeah. every bit as complicated. It's just complicated like along a different dimension. You're completely correct because, uh, you know, he's playing blues. Angus plays blues licks, but sometimes he plays it in a weird place Yeah, that I wouldn't ever yeah. And then it's like, well, I, I, I do don't you play, play it, it there? Yeah. Do you play it exactly the way that Angus no, it's does impossible. it? Okay. For me, because not the, I would not, say that they're not it, '80s written out guitar solos. They are pentatonic sections of. I'm sorry, a little bit of noise <laughs> to go back into the verse or chorus. Right. Right. And you know, and I know that's what he he knows that because he has to do this. He has to be this character. Mm-hmm. on stage and he saw it working he said you know what? i can't really play a really super complicated solo because i'm doing all this stuff 
And so I think that's how this whole thing developed. Yeah. Uh, but to he's me, still a great blues guitar player. I agree. Yeah, I, he, I think I think he's probably the only other dude from that era that uh, thematically ranks up there with like Billy Gibbons. Right. To me, mm-hmm. like you know, those two guys are the ones that make memorable melodic solos using the same fucking blues licks. You know what I mean? Right. And I it's mean, pretty amazing. I, I mean, you cannot deny the intro riff to Back in Black, though. Dude, yeah, no. no. I, you know, I sometimes I think about that riff and it gives me chills because uh, a good friend of mine who is a huge ACDC fan mm-hmm. was devastated when Bon Scott died and he was scared shitless that the new album was going to come out and it was going to suck. Oh. And he said he went to the, he hadn't heard note one, went to the record store, got the record, put it on. And heard the first song. It's giving me fucking chills <laughs> thinking about it, dude. And heard the first song, and it was Back in Black. And he was like, oh, oh, my band ain't dead. Yeah. My band's alive. Yeah. Alive right. and well. It's that voice. Man. Dude. And that it's riff. It's so daring. It's so bold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very cool stuff. Yeah. It, it's really cool stuff. And do you play through a similar setup as Angus? Do you play Marshall JCM? What does he play? JCM 800s? I believe so. I, I, uh, I, whatever I have basically is what I use. And so it's a very simple setup. It's a, uh, just basically a tuner, a uh, DS1, just for a little bit of boost and some sustain because I'm from the 80s and I can't help it, man. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't get a note to like last for two measures, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. there's something wrong with the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just that, just straight into the amp, treble all the way up, a little bit of distortion, because Angus doesn't play with a lot of distortion. No, he doesn't. I play with a little bit, probably too much, but I don't, you know, we'll get there when we get there. But this is where we're at right now, yeah. tone wise and stuff, and it I, it seems to work. What what's the I mean, amp? Nobody hates it. Uh, you know what? I, do, I don't even pay attention. It's just the other guitar player's Marshall head. Okay. Oh, so, so he's just know. got it's a Marshall head though. Yeah, it's a Marshall head. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And before that, it was some. Fender modeling amp that we found a tone that kind of sounded like him. Gotcha. But then I was throwing a distortion pedal in front of a solid state amp, <laughs> and it just said, "I do not care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything for you yeah. except for mush your sound." Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. yeah say bye bye to your dynamic range, <laughs> right. man. Yeah. 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 Nasty. You guys seem to be playing all the time now, and I I thought that once the electric shock thing, mm-hmm. uh, when that changed, and then this new Rolling Thunder came out. I always said that wherever Mark DeKalb is is where the people will go, I, and that's just what I always thought. Right. But it seems like both bands have found a market, and it's unbelievable to me right. that you guys can draw, <clears throat> that both groups can draw the way that they do, and mm-hmm. still be in kind of like the same fishbowl. Right. Yeah. It's amazing. And, well, yeah, well, that is cool. I heard. I, uh, I, you know. I heard. I heard tell ahead. that. I'm sorry, but no. I heard tell. That uh, that during Tug Fest, one of the tribute bands was playing on the Port Byron side uh, of the river, yeah. and the other band was playing on the Leclerc side of the river. Is it true? And which side of the river were you on? We and were at, we were on the Leclerc side, and I do believe that uh, Electric Shock was playing the same time over on the Illinois <laughs> side, true, Port Byron. Man. You know what I mean? Like the two towns are pulling against each other, uh-huh. and then there's the two ACDC tribute bands yeah. somehow <laughs> that are that are both trying to inspire them to be, you know to pull harder. Although uh, I still think that uh, Tug Fest sounds like some sort of uh, masturbation competition, but that's just me. Yeah, I've had Tug Fest before. Yeah. I remember when uh, I remember when Spice TV you could get yeah. it for like yeah. six dollars for like three hour right. block. Yeah, oh, me and my papa signed a Tombstone pizza, and it was Tug, Tug Fest, Fest for sure. <laughs> yeah, back when I was like had my first apartment when I was like twenty. Right. You yeah. Know what yeah. I mean? yeah, oh my yeah. god! Yeah. As soon as I got in my apartment, yeah. I looked out the blinds, yeah. closed them. Yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna jack off all night. <laughs> you, know I mean? I like, you know, and at first I went to the grocery store. And that bought, poor apartment. I did. I did three things. I threw my shoes out in the middle of the floor because my mom would never let me do that at home. Right. Yep. I went and bought a whole tub of raw cookie dough. Yeah. And got a spoon yep. and a glass of milk. And yep. Like because my mom wouldn't let me do that either. Yep. And I just had Tug Fest and ate yep. cookie dough. Yep. And threw my shoes and on just the floor. and just sugar crash, <laughs> post orgasmic dis- depression. Sugar crash, post orgasmic depression. Yep. I'm totally with it, dude. I'm with. It, oh, man by the way no i'm surprised i'm surprised all your hair didn't fall out because i was i thought that that's what caused it for me that's what i thought did it you know but uh yeah anyway. no but if it, he 
he, he thought he was going to party one night, so he brought a black light into that apartment. <laughs> oh, that no. was a bad oh, move. <laughs> it looked like a, you know, a fucking Rorschach test yeah. in there. Oh. It looked like a Jackson Pollock painting. No, I actually came my name one time. I, I, the, you know, my initials. I didn't. I couldn't see it when I did it. I was just guessing. And then when the black light party light, I was like, it worked. It worked. <laughs> Look at that! Yeah. Oh my God! Your face. They're like, "Oh, how'd you do that? Is it glow in the dark?" Yeah. Eh? No, it's calm, man. <laughs> All casual. No, seriously, it's calm. <laughs> uh, that's oh, going man. on the radio. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's uh, funny shit, bro. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get out of this segment and then uh, go have a smoke. Sure. Get another cup of coffee, and then we can. Uh, Disturbance Radio on ninety seven X. We're sitting here with Tony Vogel. <clears throat> Jesus. Take 12. <laughs> Take 12. See how that works? <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, here we go. <clears throat> What's going on? All of a sudden, I got flammy. I don't know. I don't know. It's fucking new. Mm. That's, if I was in a tribute band, I would be in Motorhead and I'd be flammy. Flammy. <laughs> 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 Bucking the fish. We're sitting here with Tony Vogel, the lead guitar player in Rolling Thunder, and uh, we're having a good time talking about how it is that he can go from being this like total schooled guitar player shredder virtuoso to ending up in an acdc tribute band and i always wanted to ask you are there any solos that actually took you more than five minutes to learn all guitar solos take me more than five minutes to learn hmm. i'm not i'm not a quick learner at all i just i sit and i do it and i do it and basically all i do i hit the iconic solos and then all the rest are just pentatonic blues ideas that i try to emulate how Angus plays, because it's near, you know, he doesn't play like that live, and so you know, I've watched enough live, I've studied him enough. This like going, okay, he, uh, I can't do what's on the album, so I'm just gonna emulate how he does it live, and it, that seems to work. I've noticed until I shred, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then and then I get a talking to after the show. Right? <laughs> I was gonna ask you that because I I was gonna say that you know. You have to be that character the whole time, and that's the challenge mm -hmm. because you want to go into you know you got a big crowd, you're on stage, you kind of forget you're in an ACDC tribute band, you start doing your own moves and poses, right? And, you know, I would, I'd be doing stuff that Angus don't do, and then mm -hmm. of course Mark would hit me in the back of the head with the drumstick, <laughs> but it would be hard not to kind of fall out of character and be you. It happens every once in a while, yeah. and it's going to. I mean, because I am not him. Yeah, <clears throat> there is always that. Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> You're fine. Even even if you've seen like a Van Halen tribute band or something like that, that guy, he's he's going to be him a little bit, you yeah. know, because nobody can just be that person. Yeah. I mean, it's like nobody can really play like Stevie Ray Vaughan and they shouldn't. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's just those type of ideas, you know, you just got to, you got to emulate as much as you possibly can. And it's like, man, I hope I get away with doing this because <laughs> I'm stuck and I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get out of this solo somehow. <laughs> so what were you doing right before you joined Rolling Thunder? Well, I was actually in a 60s and 70s uh, cover band, which was actually slowing me down to get into where I am now. Hmm. It's so, slowing you down? It slowed me down because it's 60s and 70s rock and roll. And, you know, you have to play within that style. Okay. And so that kind of was a precursor to help me say, okay, I don't have to be... I don't have to play like me all the time. I can simple it up because that's more simple. Like you said yeah. earlier, is more musical for the most part. Yeah. More people can digest it, you know, because we can't. I can't be, you know, Steve I. I can't be Joe Satriani. Lord knows I tried during that that period of time with Eric Johnson. It was like, well, I'm going to be these guys now because, you know. What was your first thought, though, when you were asked to do the Rolling Thunder? Where, did you doubt that you would be able to pull it off and oh, do the whole the, I, the choreography thing? Did you Were you scared at first, or what was what was going through your head? Um, I'm scared every time we go up and do a show. <laughs> it's like, okay. That's honest. Um, okay, I got to be Angus now. Um, you know, but once you put on the, the shorts and jacket and tie and white shirt and the tennis shoes and the low socks, you become that kid. Or that 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 artist for that particular moment in time. That's cool. Yeah. And what happens is that we'll, I like to do our two-hour set because we just hit people in the face and we're done. You know what I mean? Taking that break right now in the way that the music world works, you take that break right before eleven o'clock. You lost your audience. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so if you yep. do a two hour show, boom, you are preaching to the choir. Oh, right I one hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I want to. I want to think that I was probably one of the uh, pioneers in changing bars' opinions on that, mm-hmm. because I told them, I said, "Look, here's what you're going to do. You want us to take a break every forty five minutes. What you're doing is you're giving people a chance to leave. Mm-hmm. You know, if you they're going to stay and wait for the band, and then when the band hits the stage, don't let go of them." You know, let the band carry it until right. it's time to go. Because your whole job is to build a crowd up and get that, that whole thing going. And mm-hmm. then you've got this concert environment. Right. And then the worst thing you could do is, all right, we're going to go take a break. <laughs> and we'll be back in 15 minutes, maybe 20, maybe a half hour. I don't know. As long as it takes us to do it. And you watch the crowd look at each other and go, well, what do you want to do now? It's right, kind of yeah. like a commercial. They can't. Yeah. They can't fast forward. They're like, right. well, let's uh, let's go see what's going on down the street. It gives them the opportunity to get on their phone, see what everybody else is doing, and leave. Right. right? And I've always I've hated that. And now that you've been, I want to say that you were in a band prior to this that was what I would call. I refer to them kind of bands as like union bands, mm-hmm. where you have to adhere to the time clock. Right. And it's nine o'clock to one o'clock. Mm-hmm. You know, and you've got breaks in there. And, and it's kind of custom, it's tailor-made for a certain type of crowd that they want to dance for a while and then they want to, and then when you're done, the house music's twice as loud as the band was. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the dance floor is packed with people. Yeah. And then <laughs> when you come back on, then they all go sit back down. Yep. Right. Yep. It's like, are we the intermission music? Totally. What's going on here? Right. And that was very confusing for me. Mm-hmm. And once you got in Rolling Thunder, I'm sure that that whole dynamic mm-hmm. switched. I mean, it flipped, right? right? Because now you're a showcase band that plays a, a show and are done. Right. So what was that transition transition like for you? That was, um, it was just different because we're just, you know, I grew up just taking the breaks like we just said before. And now it's just like, boom, two-hour show. I have no idea where those two hours went. <laughs> We're, it's over. I can't remember half the things that I did on stage, which is cool. Yeah, that is. Because that just means that I was in a different world. Yeah. You know, I got to transfer myself into a different plane, which is kind of a cool thing to do. For have, two you hours. Ever, have you ever met that person before? The Tony Vogel that you are when you're playing Angus and Rolling Thunder? Is that somebody new to you or is that someone that's always been inside you? Uh, it is brand new. So it's pretty cool. Yes. You know, it's just, I've never had this experience before. It's you know, I'm, for one, I'm really happy for you. Well, yeah, me too. That. Because me too. That's marvelous. <clears throat> I think that any any musician in the area should have the opportunity at some point to, I don't know, step outside the box and maybe feel what it's like to kind of, I don't know, fantasize or vicariously kind of feel what it's like to be a mm-hmm. rock star. Mm-hmm. And in that situation, you get to do that. Right. And I've had my doses of that. And, you know, if you squint real hard, <laughs> you kind of feel like, oh, this must be what it's like. Except they do this night after night after night after night. And it's to 10 mm-hmm. times more people. Right. But still, that 1,000, 2,000 crowds that you're doing with Rolling Thunder. Yeah. I mean, what else could you ask for? <laughs> yeah. Not <laughs> much. You know? I, yeah. So I, I'm really, I'm really yeah. happy for you Thanks. in that. In that yeah situation but if i ever come see rolling thunder will you at least sneak one two-handed thing in there just real quick <laughs> just n- don't let mark see it just kind of go off to the side you know well, what i mean I think, and just like okay here I you think, go if correct me if i'm wrong but i think angus might have actually sneaked in a two-handed thing or two yeah only tapping with the pick only yeah. tapping with only the tapping pick with that's with it pick. that's it yeah. so you you feel like you've maybe found a home as far as the entertainment aspect of playing guitar exactly yeah most definitely yeah yeah because that's hard to do a lot of guitar players don't ever get to be in a show you know they a show they, they you we do it. a show uh, a lot of guitar players get to be in a you know cover band which is cool you know if that's what works no it's for not that okay great it's not really okay. that cool <laughs> yeah i'm i'm not uh i'm not a real big fan of it myself I I would be. It's hard to keep momentum up when yeah. you're changing. It would be from, very difficult for me to be in a uh, what I consider a union type bar band that plays nine to one, takes breaks, does yeah. that whole thing. Uh-huh. I I just can't do it anymore. I just can't. Nope. It's not a part of me. Um, I did that for years at first, and mm-hmm. it really stripped my soul of any enjoyment of playing. And it I realized it, a job. Yeah, it mm-hmm. is a job. Yeah. And I, I can't do it anymore. Right. That's why if the only time I could de- play guitar again in a band is if it was some kind of band like that, which leads me to think, <clears throat> which is fascinating to me, 
what if if there was some tribute band that was like needing somebody that I could fit into and be the guy? I'm like, there's no bands. It's like I'd have to be a slaughter tribute, or <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I I don't look like anybody. Maybe I could pull off a typo negative. Maybe if I lost some weight and did some push ups, <laughs> right? And I sing like this. <laughs> you know, I could maybe pull that off for a second. Mm-hmm. But no. But then who would be there? Five weird vampire chicks. You right, know, like, yeah. So, yeah. but ACDC. Right. Everybody loves ACDC. Oh yeah, right. Right. right? Yeah. Right. So you, you lucked out. I mean, right. I, Travis, I'd figure you could probably be in like a Devo tribute band. I probably could, although uh, <laughs> probably what I would do, I think the smart move would be to uh, do one of the other bands listed that has that kind of status is, is to do a uh, ZZ Top tribute band. And, uh, you know, you'd have to grow the beards and stuff, but that'd be the thing to do because mm-hmm. they're well, the other band that's kind of like that. Like, I don't know anybody. There's already a ZZ tribute, though. Yeah, yeah. I, maybe so. We're playing, I, I we're doing a gig at Poopies with a... That, uh, this yeah. month, two weeks yeah. from now, something like what, that. What are they called? I can't remember. Are they called Tres Hombres? <laughs> he don't know. He's a headliner, man. <laughs> I don't know nothing about any of his lesser, lesser acts. <laughs> any of the support. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I know. I do not have that big of an ego, but I don't, that is yeah. true. <laughs> you know what? It's very true. <laughs> I've never sat down and had a conversation with you like this. But, and you are. You're, you're a sweet guy. You're very adjusted. We've all grown up. The whole right. thing, what I was saying earlier about the guitar contest, was is, is purely a ancient before we found out how to be men attitude right you weren't oh, yeah. you weren't in you didn't know yourself you weren't no. adjusted you didn't learn how to mm-hmm. act and neither did i right and it that's what's interesting about it is you take a whole bunch of young guys and put them in a competition to see who's the best guitar player you're gonna have some attitudes well yeah right mm-hmm. obviously because you are putting a group together under false premises and everybody thinks something that is real you know thinks something is real that isn't mm. naturally there's going to be some discord but i gotta tell you this interview or this this show that we're doing right now has right. opened my eyes to who you really are you're you're a great guy well, thanks very well spoken mm. and uh laid back and, and I, I enjoy that i'm glad that i actually got to do this with you sweet yeah, yeah. it's this very cool fun. super fun yeah me yeah. too this is great yeah and i just am admiring the guitar player that's in you that's Mm -hmm. also in me and we're right the diversity that we all have together in this room is Mm -hmm. beautiful you know you're different than me i'm different than travis yeah Uh, although i mean i think the common thread for the three of us sitting here is that at some point uh we went through a period of time where we were really uh devoted truly devoted to accelerating our ability to use the instrument Mm -hmm. and I don't know that people who don't undergo that can relate to each other in in the kind of way that people who do can, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was painful. It, it is painful. It was very painful. It's like, why can't I do that? Yeah. Why? Come on. Yeah. Just a pick and string. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if somebody else could do it, why yep. can't my muscles do it? Right. Yeah. yeah. Should be. Should be. Should be right there. I can visualize the whole thing. I see myself doing it. Right. But yet, you mm-hmm. know. But yet, it's just not. It's not there. But at the same time, I mean. Uh, I think you end up forcing yourself to find out what it's all really worth to you in a way mm. that people who don't undergo that pain right. never really are moved to do as a matter of just, you know, almost like desperation. You know what I mean? Like you almost just have to realize that uh, that if you don't learn to respect your limitations or at least try to find out how to have some other relationship with music, one that's m- more capable of being satisfied than uh, or it's healthy. All, or, or healthy. healthy. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is like an illness, uh, right. you know. But, the, of course, the illness is... Uh, like an emotional illness you know it's it's like um mm. it's like you're really just beating yourself up you right. know that's that's really what you're left with so mm-hmm. so if you can figure out how to stop beating yourself up and revive what it is that set you on the path and made you want to do it because you loved music on you know right. some level some, some level right. some somehow mm-hmm. then uh then that's a beautiful moment that's the moment mm-hmm. of redemption for right. guys like us, you know, right. where we get back in touch with what it is that we loved about music before we ever touched a guitar. Mm-hmm. And now we can use our guitar to access that instead of... I think I might still be on that quest. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, I, I don't know. I was sitting here thinking of something while you were saying all that. Uh-huh. And, I, and I'm trying to think like, of course, I can listen to all kinds of different music and I can try to separate myself as you know the musician from what i'm hearing yeah. that's what i try to do all the time mm-hmm. you know the most the most impossible thing that you can do is hear one of your songs 
through somebody else's ears. Right. You know, so you never really know what your song sounds like right. to anybody. You're always, you're always hearing the layers and yeah, all of this everything. shit that you didn't right. do right. And I wish that I, you could knock me in the head and I wouldn't even yeah. know who I am. And they'd be like, listen to the song. Right. That sucks. Well, right. that's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I've always wanted to be yeah. able to do that. You're like, yeah. give me a pill that makes me forget that I wrote I, it. You know? I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know that, that that's necessarily what I'm talking about, though. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that. I mean, obviously, we're all still, like, still, when I pick up a guitar, I'll still monkey around with it like I used to. You know what I mean? Right. That's That's what I do. But, uh, but I think, I think like now I, I don't know too much about your circumstances as a uh, you know as a creative artist. You know mm-hmm. what w- original music that you've done and things like this. But I know for you that when you kind of let go of the drop hammer dream and then made the Zach Alex album, that you it, a lot of what you did there, a lot of the work that you did there was really a departure from that whole style and that whole way of thinking into your more pure kind of musical intentions. And I, I think that that is a redemption for you. I think that was a moment where you sort of redeemed some of your music and got yourself back into the, 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 the what, what the simple thing was that it was mm-hmm. at the beginning. For me, I think I was trying to do what I thought everybody wanted me to do, which was an extension of kind of the identity that I built for myself when I walked into the call ballroom mm-hmm. as an 18 year old and then showed everybody what I can do. Cause there was a point where Brian went from just this normal kid, you know, that impressed his buddies in his bedroom sometimes with some riffs, you know, I can play mm-hmm. Detroit rock city. Like, dude, you're awesome. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, I'm good. special to these guys somehow. Yeah. And yeah. then it went from that to then adults that have been around and been in bands and done all this stuff going, dang kid and now i'm like well i'm special to them too and i went a good period of time kind of getting to fly above normal being a normal person right because right. i could walk into rooms and have people be like there's that brian minor he right. shreds man even if it even if i really wasn't that good in this small pond mm-hmm. in this small pond i was a name right and right. i never really had to like go through all the nuts and bolts of, of figuring out how to socialize with people because i immediately was the one that was talk to you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying and mm-hmm. it, it, that plays with your ability to grow as a person oh it right. definitely does mm-hmm. and and i did that for a long time and it was always and i didn't know how to react to it because it was kind of like this uh uh hey you're brian minor that's how it would i would be approached a lot and i don't know how to react to that instead of like hey dude what's your name yeah right. that is something i'm like oh, that's, I'm, that's brian. Yeah. Yeah, it's I'm brian open-ended. yeah i'm brian how you yeah. doing i was right. longing you for are, you yeah. aren't you weren't titled already i was right. longing yeah. for yeah. that but yeah. people, if they already knew who i was then it was this my you, would say, you, yeah my my whatever it is that uh, the essence or whatever they thought i was preceded actually talking to me and then they were holding me to this standard of what they expected me to act like but, but mm-hmm. then but then but and really, life. though, you were all it was it had to always be constantly colored by what your own ideas about what they were thinking was. I mean, yeah. and mm-hmm. in that point, in that respect, it's it's a it's a project. It's like a projection of a false identity. Right. And that is basically what the ego is. Right. That is that is how oh, the ego yeah. functions. Speaking you know? of the ego, when you get off stage after a Rolling Thunder show and you get because I know that you do. You're going to get a whole bunch of, you know, drunk guys mm-hmm. with ACDC shirts like, dude, you're awesome, man. You're like the best guitar player I've ever seen. And is there a part of you that's like, you haven't seen me play guitar yet, buddy. <laughs> is there a part of you, you know what I mean? Uh, or do you? Well, we, you know, people, you know, every once in a while, I'll, I'll post something on Facebook uh, from like two years ago where I'm playing like melodic stuff. You know stuff that I write, and like people say, I've never heard you play like that before. Mm-hmm. I only know you as Angus Young, right. Tony uh, being Angus. Right. And it's like, well, that's cool. I mean, there's everybody has you know different sides to their musicality. Sure. That you, you know. Yeah. I mean, kind of, kind of pursuant to the point that right. I was making exactly. was, which exactly. is the idea that no matter how you try to project yourself as a false identity, the truth is, yeah. is that the truth about you will always leak through. You <laughs> exactly. know what I mean? Right. It always still comes out. It's mm-hmm. like you know, kind of like how you might think, well, you haven't really seen me play. It's like, yes, they fucking have. Mm-hmm. Yes, they have. They have seen you play, but they may have seen this context of play. Right. You know, and and it's it's kind of like the whole, uh, how can I not be myself? How can I not be myself? How can I not be myself? You know, like if you really play around with that question in your mind, you'll realize that it's inescapable. You mm-hmm. can only be yourself. True. Your best imitations and your best emulations and your best simulations <laughs> and all your Asians, you know, that's exactly all they are. 
and that it's always going to be you. Mm-hmm. Even if you have some idea about it that's completely wrong, <laughs> exactly. it's always going to be you. You know? Yeah. So anyway. Do you do the whole? Up. Do you do the strip tease thing too? Uh, it you. might get incorporated a little bit, but it just doesn't go as far as how Angus does it. Mm. How far does Angus go? Down to his underwear? He he yeah he pulls his shorts down and moons the crowd. Oh, I'm, I won't be doing that. He gets bare butt cheeks out. Yeah, you can get arrested for that. Isn't that illegal in Iowa? To show your butthole. You can't show your butt, Ellie. It's not. I mean, he doesn't like spread eagle it. I mean, he doesn't. <laughs> doesn't fruit bowl it. Tuck it all back. Fruit bowl it. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Let everybody see the whole fruit bowl. No. no. Come on, man. No. Dude, you'd have like two thousand more people there. Word up. Word <laughs> up. Don't you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, but okay. So <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh come on, Lord. guys. Hey. So uh, the rock power. and roll is a powerful thing. Oh, man. rock. Yeah, and it turns you into. I don't know, man. I always, when I got done with gigs, like with uh, Die Bomb or Third Rail or whatever, and I'm still eyelinered up and the, still leather pants, you know, and I'm yeah. taking off and I got my wife with me. She's all hot and she's big boobs and stuff. And I'm like, I'm Tommy Lee right now. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I don't have that big a dick, but I'm Tommy Lee right now. And, you know, you, you want to play that fantasy yeah, right. out, you know? Like, and then, you know, you it, it just never really plays out that way. Yeah. But, you know, it's big fantasy, you know, yeah. done playing a gig, yep. go home, and, yeah, yeah. Like doing lines of coke yeah, up there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know. Dude. But really, that's not yeah, what Yeah, that's is, not dude. what happens at all. You stop no. by Hardee's, you yeah, have exactly. a monster burger. That's what I was going to say. Your wife throws up and it's, then passes out. It's a monster burger and boner pills. <laughs> 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 We've had a lot of fun, Tony. Thanks for stopping by and doing MDR with us. Thanks uh, for having me. I know it gets a little crazy sometimes, <laughs> but we'll try to make some sort of radio show out of this. Yep. And uh, good luck with Rolling Thunder. You're, you're hey, kicking ass with it. And I I mean, what dates do you have coming up after the purgatory thing? Poopies and then actually uh, uh, Rascals all this month still. Oh, you get, you're getting a show at Rascals. Have you done Rascals before? We did it. Yeah. February, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good turnout. Yeah. All right. Excellent. What are you charging? Like ten bucks at the door? Probably. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> he don't know. I don't know. I just. I show you can up. keep the wireless, kid. Exactly. Take <laughs> <laughs> it. Take it. You're never gonna live that down now. I'm putting these on. I'm going away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put on your white earmuffs. Yeah. I just will. Can. I will put these on. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget the 1152 CD release at Rascals on September 30th. And the and the MDR All Star Jam on October twenty first. Tony's gonna kill it. Come check him out because he's gonna be up there shredding with both hands, Shred. just ripping. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm gonna be a lot of fun. It's, it's gonna be a blast. Yeah. yeah. So Can't thank wait. you. This is Minor Service Radio on ninety seven X. Oh shit, I said.